Amateur radio, known as ham radio, is a way of communicating with people using radio frequencies. There are over one million ham radio operators worldwide. Normally what happens is that ham radio operators talk to one another. And it's about any subject you might think of. They might talk about a problem they're having with the yard. So it's normal conversations. We just do it over the airwaves as opposed to a phone call. For many, amateur radio is a hobby, but it's also a vital way of communicating. Amateur radio, ham radio, is extremely important to emergency management, uh, not just here, but uh, in every state in the, in the United States. It's a form of communication that may work and will work uh, when, uh, when we, all other systems are down. And it's proved that in uh, numerous disasters here recently. And so we've got a somewhat fragile communications infrastructure in terms of wind and surge and potential of earthquakes and that sort of thing. But ham radio uh, being basically point to point uh, and, you know, fairly sophisticated, but it's a much simpler system and not as linked together as some of these other systems are. You have to go back to what is it that we do. We don't provide primary communications for uh, the public service people who are normally responding to something. We're, we provide redundant communications, backup communications, so that when something else isn't working, he still can talk. In the last several years, South Carolina has experienced several natural disasters, and when communications go down, the amateur radio operators are ready to assist. And here in South Carolina, uh, we've got staff and uh, equipment in each one of the 46 counties uh, so that we could potentially talk to them in a situation where the normal systems go down. Uh, so it's going to be extremely important to, uh, to work with uh, these folks and make sure that they're in tune to our systems and they understand how we work and what's going to be expected of them. These folks are not paid, but they are essential. So what about the future? In the age of smartphones and video games, is the next generation interested in this way of communicating? They have a, in the middle school in Aiken, downtown Aiken, Schofield Middle School, they have a club for ham radio. And they just started another club in the high school in North Augusta. I see that that's the new folks coming in. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 4th, Sierra and Mike Sierra. We are a school at Schofield. Annie Matson, an eighth grader at Schofield Middle School in Aiken and a member of the school's ham club, is part of the next generation. It's just like a way to talk to people and you find someone out there and you just learn about like their life and you talk to them about like whatever they want to talk about and they like ask you about like what grade you're in or what's your favorite color and what's your favorite um, subject in school and things like that and you just get to meet so many really cool people. Annie describes it like a high-tech pen pal. She's been in touch with people all across the world. On the day we visited, she talked with a retired middle school teacher from Connecticut and an operator from Canada. And now back over to you, uh, Annie, at the middle school. When you make a contact with someone, they send you a QSL card, and it's like this little postcard that has their uh, call sign on it, I'm going here, and they, they have like all this information about it, and you send one back. The ham club at Schofield has won national awards and made contact with every state and even 48 nations. But for Annie, like other operators around the world, it's not just about having fun and meeting people. I think it's important to me because it's a really good way to give back to the community. Like it's a really great way to help people because like in emergencies and stuff, you can help people. If we can encourage people uh, to join the amateur radio ranks and you know, I find it myself quite fascinating, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, to talk when nothing else works and being able to communicate. And that's the name of the game is being able to communicate. And if we can't communicate in emergency management and find out what's going on down at the ground, then we're not going to be successful. And so it's so critical. So it certainly would encourage, you know, the younger generation uh, to take a look at it because it is fascinating in terms of the technology. I mean, when you can... Uh, take a, a radio, a relatively small power, a small antenna here in South Carolina and you can talk the entire world. Whether in an emergency or for a hobby, the future of amateur radio is not only bright, but crucial.